tonight is May the 23rd, 2017. So I thought I'd make a, a video tonight on a subject that we're all uh, interested in, I hope. There's always a lot of discussion about it, and that's about capacitors. Um, three things tonight. One is, things that I have experienced before is uh, when you take capacitors that have been laying around for decades that may very well still be good. I mean, look at these guys right here. These are those um, Sangamo, however you say it, USA, 0.47, 400 volt. I mean, they're, they're sealed in this uh, plastic. I find these things to be pretty well. Every one of them is still very good. Now, I know some people uh, have a philosophy of if you're going to check a capacitor, then just replace it. If you're going to go to the trouble to disconnect to at least one end of it, which you're probably going to have to do to really test it properly or completely remove it from the circuit, if you're going to go to that much trouble, then just put a new one in. You know, I'm not against that philosophy. I'm not saying that isn't correct. I'm not saying that isn't a good idea. But you may not want to do that. You may want to re retain your old uh, Bumblebee capacitors like these guys right here. And I'll show you some of these. So, you know, sometimes we want to check them. Um, and then another thing that's on my mind tonight is uh, I read an article just recently about these types of metal outside capacitors. These are the ones I was tinkering with last night. And they talk about the uh, shunt capacitance from the signal path to the case. And indeed, there is a reasonable amount. There's like 70 or more picofarads. So you, you would probably want to take some care not to ground this case to the chassis, or you would be shunting uh, some of your higher frequencies. Okay, first of all, let's start out by seeing if my theory, <clears throat> seeing if I can prove what I know I have observed before, and that is... Uh, very old capacitors. These capacitors are probably a good 50 years old. They probably haven't been used in I don't have I don't know how many years, decades. Um, and what I've noticed before is one of those things where you measure them and they measure really low, and then you go like, "Wow, that is the capacitor is bad," and then you uh, leave it on the checker for a while. The next thing you know, it's like it's okay. Well, what happened? And you just kind of shrug it off. Well, those are the kinds of things that uh, slip past us. So let's see if I can prove uh, my theory. And then after, if it measures low, and I have not done anything to any of these capacitors. These I have, and these are all dandy. But these I have not uh, tested them, charged them, or anything. And then, if it measures low, then we will put voltage across it. I have a, a wonderful little uh, voltage source. Let's see. Where is it in the camera? Yeah, oh yeah, it's this guy down here. You can just barely see it. But we can go up to 999.99 volts, or down to 10 millivolts. So, I'll show you how that, that, that works just dandy. So, let's see. Now, the challenge I have is making sure that you're going to be able to read this thing. I think you are. Yeah, I think I can see that. Okay. First of all, virgin capacitor. Hasn't been... Nothing has been done with this thing in many, many years. I have no idea. 20, 30, 40 more years. I don't know. Okay. Let's zero our meter. Let's get, let's get to cooking here. And let's see what it measures and measure it quickly. Okay, 0 0.52. Okay, so so we can't say that one's good. That one is actually measuring more than. This experiment may completely bomb. It'll be the first time. Okay, this one's supposed to be uh, 0.47. Let's see how it measures very quickly. It measures 0.48. Oh, okay, well, forget that. This is going to not work out again. But I know I'm not crazy. I know I've, I've seen this. And we all know that we've seen this for darn sure on electrolytics. Absolutely certain of that. Not even trying to... A point 0.1. 
Uh, we'll just do a couple more. If it doesn't work out, we'll move on quickly. Okay, 95 nanofarads. That's about as close to point one as we can. Yep, I'm going to bomb out again tonight on this. Maybe, maybe it's all in my imagination. Who knows? Maybe I'll never see this again. Okay, there's another point one. Okay, well, so much for that. I just, I just want to see it one more time. Well, that's 101. You can just take my word for some of these so you don't have to look at all these. Here's a really fancy one out of a, probably a Tektronix scope or something. A uh, .33. Okay, this is going to be the one. Nope. Okay, let's move on. That's not going to work. Not going to work. <sighs> let's look at shunt capacitance. To do that, I'm going to use a different meter that's actually uh, more fun to use and easier to see. What I have to do is put the capacitor across here. I'll put it on the uh, 100 picofarad scale. This beautiful old Tektronix uh, LC meter measures uh, 3 picofarads full scale, 310, 30, 100, or 300. It's an RF. Uh, man's uh, instrument rather than much of an audio one, I suppose. And it also measures microhenries from 3 microhenries to 300 microhenries. So it's just right for measuring really small capacitors. Okay, let's take this guy right here. This is a uh, 1 microfarad. And if we put it here, this is the hot lead. And then we put the other one to the chassis. Uh, not to the chassis, but to the ground side there, you can see that is measuring about oh, uh, 65, 68 microfarads, uh, not microfarads, picofarads. Get some of that glare off. There we go, now you can actually see it. Sixty-seven, sixty-eight picofarads. That's shunt capacitance to ground. If, uh, if indeed this case was grounded, let's try another one, <clears throat> a little bit smaller one. I think the results are pretty much the same. Actually, that one's even a little bit more. See, that one is over a seventy picofarads to ground. I mean, it's not an enormous amount. It's not going to short circuit your high frequencies to ground, but it is going to start attenuating them. So I think it's something that needs to be kept in mind when, uh, if you use these old capacitors like that, these old metal capacitors. Just, it, just I ran across that article by uh, chance the other day. Okay, <clears throat> now that we've done that, there's one other practice that I use if I want to actually check a capacitor and try to save it. <clears throat> and that is, and uh, I think we've had some discussion about this before in, on some of my uh, YouTube postings, and that is to put a voltage across it, a voltage in series with a meter right here. We use this old triplet meter because it's so easy to see, just easy to work with. We'll do right here so we can see the meter and we take our uh, capacitor and put, we'll lead on to it we'll put it on the high higher DC scale like 300 volts and then we're just simply going to put it in series with this power supply I may hook it up backwards but if I do we'll turn it around and then, okay, now I'm going to crank it up. I'm going to put 100 volts across it. There's 100, 2, 3, 300 volts. And you can see the meter going down to zero. And we can start lowering this. 
have to work with one hand here. See, I'm all the way down to point. 6 volts full scale, so that capacitor is not leaking DC. That capacitor is good. Now, again, you know, uh, everybody has their ideas about capacitors, and because um, it, it's always a subject that it has so, so many opinions in it, but um, every time you open up a, an instrument, the idea of going through and replacing all of the capacitors is some people's idea of doing it, the job right, and they do indeed go through and replace them all. But I don't think that's necessary. And not only is it not necessary, it, it changes the vintage of it, I suppose. That's one way to look at it. Okay, let's turn this thing back to zero. Okay, now, now here's an example of a good and a bad capacitor. Um, Here's a couple of bumblebees. This one right here that has the red dot on it, I know leaks. Here's a .22. If I put, if I just swap out the capacitor right here, maybe I can leave the meter right there and I don't have to be moving things around. And clip this guy in there. Let's, let's put the good one in first. If we clip the good one in, which is a back up on a higher scale. And it's a 400 volt capacitor, so we'll put 400 volts across it. There's 100, 2, 3, 400 volts. And we can see it charges up and goes back to zero. Right back to zero. And we start going down into scales. That capacitor is not leaking and replacing that capacitor isn't going to fix anything. Now you may want to replace it just because that's your philosophy and so be it. Okay, let's turn our high voltage off and now let's put in a different capacitor. This one right here. This is a 0.47 and we'll put uh, 100, 2, 3, 400 volts on it. And you see, and this one does not go to zero. That capacitor is bad. Now, bad, what does bad mean? If that were the input capacitor, if that were the capacitor <clears throat> at the very uh, input to the amplifier, it's not going to hurt anything. You're not going to notice anything. Uh, it's it's going to work just fine. I don't know what the DC resistance of that capacitor is, but it's going to be really high. But it's not going to affect anything as long as there's no voltage across it. Now, if that capacitor were connecting um, one voltage amplifier to the other, that is one, let me turn it off here. If, if one end of it was, um, one end of it was going, to, whoops, excuse me one end of it was going to the plate of uh, a stage driving the grid of another stage it's going to affect it really bad things are not going to work very well and you're going to have to replace it so good bad whatever the philosophy is the shunt capacitance to ground of these guys is real although I think they're magnificent the, the way that they're sealed these things will probably last a thousand years so uh, I'm not about to throw away all of my vintage capacitors yet, but I do believe that uh, we should uh, use caution uh, before we use them and check them. And as far as electrolytic capacitors go, I don't think there's a whole lot of discussion on that because we know that if they've sat around for years, for 10, 20, 30 years, <clears throat> they may be bad, but they may not either. This, this, this unit right here, this little Tektronix device, all the components in it are original. All the vacuum tubes are original, and all the capacitors in it are original, including the electrolytics, and it works perfectly. So I'm sure that there's quality. I'm sure that uh, how it was used, uh, the environment it's been stored in, you know, whether it's been really hot or really cold, moisture, etc., is going to affect uh, 
the life of these things, but you got to be really careful when you work on vacuum tube stuff, and especially swapping tubes out. If this guy works, and it works pretty good, and this one works just marvelous, you really don't want to go in there and start swapping the tubes out. For heaven's sakes, don't retube it. It'll probably never work right again. <clears throat> Well, anyway, like I said, this will probably cause more uh, uh, more questions and discussion than it does answers. But that's what I do for what it's worth. And um, it seems to work for me. If you have ideas of how we should check capacitors, you know. I know that we measure ESR with little ESR meters. And uh, let me get one here. I don't think so prove much of anything. These little ESR meters are pretty darn cool, but they're they're basically made just for uh, electrolytic type and uh, sizable capacitors. I think everybody knows what these things are. And if you measure 0.47s or something like that, you're really going to get some pretty goofy, not goofy, but probably pretty worthless result. Here's a 0.33. And it says its ESR is uh, 4.5, 4.5 ohms. Well, 0.33 isn't really on here. So uh, you could use it for comparison to compare it to another 0.33. And if you had five of these things and you measured them and they measured 4.5, 4.2, 4.0, 5.0, and then the last one measured uh, 29. You know, you might say, oh, that's kind of that's kind of bad, right? You can use it for uh, comparison measurements, but I don't think these ESR meters are uh, of much real value in measuring uh, signal type capacitors in the, in an audio circuit. Anyway, I enjoy making these videos and uh, the discussions that oftentimes ensue from them, and so I hope this helps. And uh, thanks for watching. Be careful. Don't get electrocuted. I might show you one other instrument I've just recently picked up, and that's its HP432A power meter, RF power meter. It's good from uh, 10 megahertz to 10 gigahertz. It uses a little thermocouple down here. Just a really beautiful device. I think they were made back as... Uh, late as the 60s and up through the 70s and I don't know um, when they stopped making this model made another one these analog ones but if they're calibrated to HP specs they're supposed to be good to 0.5 percent so that's pretty that's pretty good for a little analog meter um, where I get a lot of this stuff and is it estate sales I talk to people that never have been to estate sales and they go really what's an estate sale well that's usually where people have died and the kids are selling everything in this case uh, you know I get some of my stuff from ham radio operators uh, that have died they call uh, a silent key for the uh, non uh, ham radio operator out there so when they're SK silent key oftentimes their stuff lays around for a long time and then their kids sell it in, a, in an estate sale where you just walk in and you, you get you get stuff at ridiculous prices just just unbelievable Anyway, I have a lot of fun, and I get a lot of equipment from there. Uh, not necessarily much of anything you're looking at right here in particular. Uh, this big guy right here that I've shown a number of times, I got this at a at an estate sale for a, a silent key for zero dollars. Just please take it, you know, take it. it. Weighs 127 pounds. If you could carry it off, you could have it. And that happens a lot of times. Anyway. Uh, Check your newspaper, online, whatever, for, for estate sales. And uh, I bet some of you guys already do it. But if you don't, you can get some real bargains. You'll get all kinds of stuff that you love but you don't need. And you'll even get addicted to it. And you'll even get more and more stuff that that you don't need. And you don't even have room for it, but you got to have more. Anyway, that's it. Thanks.